Hello and welcome to Views on News. I am Jawate Hami. The 24th Council of the Heads of State of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Kazakhstan's capital city of Astana has adopted the Astana Declaration and has also approved 25 strategic documents covering energy, security, trade, finance and information security. According to the declaration, the member states have underscored the SEO's role in bolstering global peace, security and stability and shaping a new democratic, equitable, international, political and economic order, inviting the global community to join the initiative. Also, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, during his address at the summit, has emphasized the importance of maintaining peace in the region as a precondition for economic development. During his address, the Prime Minister said, let me quote, Achieving lasting peace in Afghanistan is a linchpin to this common objective. Terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, including state terrorism, must be condemned in clear and unambiguous terms. Unquote. Also, talking about Pakistan's role in regional connectivity, the Prime Minister said, let me quote him, the country's location made it ideal conduit for the region. CPAC supplemented SEO's vision of regional connectivity and economic integration. Unquote. The Prime Minister also reiterated Pakistan's commitment to strengthen the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The Prime Minister also addressed the SCO Plus, calling the effective multilateralism as a key in addressing the regional and global challenges. And during this particular address, the Prime Minister also talked about the resolution of all the outstanding issues, talked about the challenges faced by the world because of Islamophobia, climate-induced disasters, and the impacts of COVID-19. On the sidelines, the Prime Minister also interacted with a number of um, leaders of the countries, including uh, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, and congratulated him on the inclusion of Belarus in Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Also, there is a statement by uh, Pakistan's uh, Foreign Office during her uh, weekly press briefing. Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zara Baloch has talked about the uh, Council of Heads of Government of Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit that will be held here in October in Pakistan. All these important aspects uh, are for discussion in today's show. For that, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Dr. Fida Bazai, his Foreign Affairs expert. and. Uh, uh, later on in the show, we'll be joined by other participants as well. I'll be introducing them as they join in. Let me begin the discussion with you, Dr. Bazai. Now, uh, let's talk about the Astana Declaration. Uh, the member states of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization have underscored in bolstering the SEO's role uh, in getting that global peace, stability and security, creating that uh, international political and uh, economic equitable uh, world order. What sort of a role do you foresee of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as per the uh, commitment that has been shown in this particular moot? <clears throat> Thank you, Jawad, for inviting me on this important subject. I mean, um, it is very important to understand that the entire world is already connected. If we see North America, North America is already economically, socially and politically now they've almost turned into a block. European Union has not a secret that it has taken a, a different form. It has reached international organization to a new level. It has set a new standard that our international organization should be working. Then we come to the Southeast Asia. Southeast Asian countries are again economically, politically they are very connected. They, they are having a mechanism. That mechanism is facilitating their economic and trade relationship. They are remo removing their political differences through various conflict resolution mechanism. What is unfortunate in this part of the country, the Shanghai region, in this region, Shanghai can play a very important role. We see there is a vacuum of international organization in this region. 
once international uh, Shanghai organization turn into an effective organization, it could easily address some of the major fundamental issues that is disturbing the peace, stability, security that does not allow this region to economically prosperous. So, for economic prosperity, for trade relationship, for connectivity, there is the need of a paradigm shift from security oriented foreign policy toward economic oriented foreign policy. So, so, so what are those stumbling blocks, the challenges that come in the way of that sustainable peace and economic prosperity in this particular region? Uh, the challenges are clear. Like first there is, as I already mentioned, that there is no mechanism that could that forces state to sit together like we have seen there are differences political differences in europe as well but they have mechanism in the in the form of european union there are political differences between mexico and united states but they are having their own arrangement and mechanism that does not allow them to go beyond a certain limit there are mechanism in east asia we do not have any kind of mechanism in this region unfortunately sark is not that effective sark there are not that many effective countries in SARC that could turn into an effective organization. The other organization that could replace SARC or play a better and greater role than SARC is Shanghai organization, uh, cooperation organization. As we can see that Shanghai is mostly headed by China and Russia, they are the, the major player in Shanghai mm -hmm. cooperation organization. So they, they are coming with their own world order. In this part of the world, they are having far greater role than any country. So they will be defining the rule of the game and the regional business, economic and political order. And that, keeping that in view, Shanghai is immensely important. So it is important for Pakistan to pitch its agenda in Shanghai organization in a way where we could use it for our own foreign so policy. So you business. talked about SARC having been made ineffective because of what factors will come back to you and what uh, sort of impact it could have that particular approach of certain factors or elements in order uh, to make SARC uh, ineffective. What those elements or factors could do with the uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization as far as enhancement in its effectiveness is concerned. Let me bring in another panelist in the show, uh, Mr. G.R. Baloch, his former ambassador, joining us on Skype. Mr. Baloch, thank you very much for your time for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that. Uh, by uh, talking about the Astana Declaration, uh, what, as per your understanding, is the significance of this particular declaration that calls for SCO's role in bolstering global peace, security and stability and also bringing in a more just political and economic and equitable world order and also the approval of 25 strategic documents. What does that particular thing signify? Uh, if you look at it, uh, look at the world today, uh, it is characterized by conflicts, uh, contestations, uh, kind of tug of war uh, between different powers, a kind of a new greater game, if you will, um, and not one but several great games being played. But the victim, but the victim of all of these conflicts are the common people in the world. In fact, those, uh, especially the the, the South, uh, is the is the biggest victim because most of the uh, several uh, conflicts are in this region. Uh, in the southern region of the world as if you divide it between the north and the south in terms of economic development, in terms of dominance, dominance in the in the institu in international institutions and of course at the overall development ladder that we, we, we consider that. That being the case, I think there is more than before a need for harmony, for bringing uh, a platform uh, to become more active like a CEO which I think if we look at it, uh, essentially represents more than one-fourth of the, of the global population of the world. And in terms of the GDP of the world, I think it will be, uh, I was reading somewhere, three-fourths of the world GDP comes from these countries that they are part of SCO. Uh, so I think now there has to be a, 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 there is a big mismatch in terms of what we do with our lives and the, and the effect and impact of other 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 powers so i think there is a need for our uh, uh, part of the world 
to really use this platform. And I think that the kind of theme that has been built about peace and harmony and development, I think that should be translated. And I'm hoping that the 20 resolutions and three declarations, that statements that will be made would be a kind of correct and a historical event. And, and we will see that SEO really turns into a solid developmental block, which actually would not only uh, concentrate on the uh, development of harmony and peace within that the member countries, but it will contribute to the world's uh, overall harmony in the world, overall so solution of all the conflicts uh, and also the economic development and development challenges that we face in terms of uh, in terms of the the climate change, in terms of the disparity that the world is facing at these this point of time. Yes, Mr. Jawa. For the interjection over here, your point is well taken. You have talked about the need of having harmony in this particular region. Now, uh, Prime Minister, during his address, at the SEO Plus has also talked about the challenges faced globally because of the climate-induced disasters, the impacts of COVID-19, and also talked about uh, hate and incitement towards hate and Islamophobia in particular. And has also urged uh, the regional leaders and the global leaders in order to have that unity, in order to uh, face these challenges is the collective ac action and the collective effort now this particular phenomenon of unity when it comes to addressing these global challenges the impact of covid-19 climate induced disasters also dealing with islamophobia how this particular phenomenon particularly in the region of the seo could be acquired could be what could be the practical measures in that regard i think what 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 can be done is uh that when there is an understanding at the highest political level, then what happens, these decisions, these understanding, they filter down to the functional apparatus of all the states, member states. And from there, then it permeates into the in, entire ecosystem of the region and beyond. And that is the importance of this summit that we are discussing today. Yes, Mr. Chukwu. Right, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Baloch. I, I have been joined by another uh, participant on the phone line, Dr. Talish Shabir. He's international relations expert. Uh, Dr. Shabir, thank you very much for your time, for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that. Now, the adoption of the Astana Declaration, also approval of 25 strategic documents. Uh, as per your understanding, what does that signify? And particularly when we talk about the Astana Declaration uh, urging uh, the global community to join the initiative regarding SEO's role in bolstering global peace, stability and security and having that uh, more democratic, equitable, political and economic world order. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joel, for having me on your show. I think it's a very important uh, discussion that is taking place. Uh, SEO Summit has uh, uh, coming to pro, uh, but we must know that uh, why this is important is because uh, we should know that 80% uh, of Asian land, 80% uh, of land mass is uh, SEO. 40% of world population is SEO. 20% of global GDP is SEO. 20% of oil reserves are SEO. So, so huge resources that we have in SEO and it is coming together and uh, trying to uh, trying to build a uh, build a forum where they can have connectivity, they can have business, they can cooperate on energy, they can cooperate on security issues, cooperate on trade. I think it's a great uh, great organization it can become a great organization that can change the economic landscape of uh, uh, this region as well as they can help uh, politically. Again, I think they can also uh, bring. Uh, peace in this region. So uh, today's uh, summit <clears throat> came to close. You know, it has many lessons for all the countries, and I think there are certain big promises that uh, that have made, and they're very much noble. <clears throat> and Prime Minister of Pakistan has also repeated, uh, has mentioned also that what uh, Pakistan has uh, to uh, you know contribute and what Pakistan expects this uh, forum to. Uh, and I think this is a huge uh, hope, prayer for hope uh, for, for the region and uh, for us, particularly for Pakistan, where we can have uh, 
activity in the region. We can have peace in the region, and we can work for. I think uh, the, all the agendas of SEO are in alignment with the objectives of Pakistan's foreign policy. Uh, Dr. Talal Shabir, uh, you, uh, your point is well taken, but unfortunately there is a little bit of distortion. We can't hear you properly. We'll try to uh, reconnect with you. And as soon as um, we reconnect, we'll resume the discussion from this p uh, particular point with you. Uh, so, um, Dr. Bazai, uh, now uh, you already talked about the ineffectiveness of SARC that has been made ineffective. Uh, when we talk about uh, the role of India or the approach or the attitude of the Indian side in making SARC ineffective. We've seen it has also be become a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, how do you analyze India's approach when uh, we talk about its status as a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Or could it also um, bring in uh, those factors into play that could be the stumbling block as far as the effectiveness of SEO is concerned? <clears throat> I think uh, they are two different organizations. India has a far greater role in uh, uh, SARC. If it wanted, it could have turned SARC into an effective organization. It could have resolved all major fundamental issues through this platform. But unfortunately, it did not use that platform and neither it allowed that platform to be used that effectively to address major issues. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Shanghai Cooperation Organization, it is a different kind of organization. There are different players. There are two other major countries that are having far greater influence and role than India. They are Russia and China. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, their political worldview is now more aligned with Pakistan worldview than with the Indian one. Right. So there are great possibilities that this Shanghai cooperation organization will bring them together, India and Pakistan together, that SAR could not do. Because these two countries would be having, they are already having different kind of influence on Pakistan and India both. So they would be using their good office to bring a kind of harmony in region because the, the objective of Shanghai Cooperation Organization is connectivity, trade, economic integration and climate. These objectives could not be achieved in the presence of conflict, war, terrorism and instability. Uh, that is exactly what has been highlighted by Prime Minister in his uh, address at SEO plus also the resolution of all the outstanding issues. Uh, when we talk about the charter and the principles of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization that are pretty much in line with the Charter of the United Nations and we talk about the right to self-determination, the resolution of the outstanding disputes as per the relevant United Nations Security Council uh, resolutions. Talking about this region, we know there is a long-standing dispute between Pakistan and India, the Kashmir dispute, how the SEO forum could provide that opportunity for the resolution of this long-standing dispute. Is there any mechanism under the charter of the principles of SEO? SEO, one of the fundamental principles that is governing SEO is political sovereignty. They totally believe on the sovereignty of countries and they don't unlike western countries where their political ideologies are more intervening like they they start banning state for freedom of expression for human right violation for democracy but eastern world order is more based on sovereignty of state on the non-interference on integrity territorial integrity so they are two different kind of ideological paradigms in this Eastern political uh, uh, philosophy that is governing the relationship between state, there is possibility that they would bring Pakistan and India together because now the interest is common. The entire interest of the entire region is common. Peace in this region would not be possible unless there is a sustainable, equitable, 
just in peace between India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan are fundamental players in this region. Uh, uh, right, Mr. Baloch, what's your understanding? Could the SEO Forum provide an opportunity for Pakistan and India uh, to come closer and also impress upon India as far as the resolution of the long-standing dispute between Pakistan and India, the Kashmir dispute is concerned? Uh, before I really uh, go on to comment on Pakistan-India uh, resolving their differences uh, using the good offices of SCO or SCO becoming a platform for talks, I would say that perhaps uh, we have to look at how India is uh, uh, playing the role in SCO. Uh, I being a realist in terms of as a student of international relations, in my assessment, uh, India has been following not a what it claims to have a a strategic autonomy, but an strategic ambiguity. Uh, it wants to be part of the Western uh, power bloc. Uh, look at the number of agreements it has signed, uh, uh, the Quad and several other. Uh, bilateral uh, agreements, military-related agreements that it has signed with America. And uh, so I think uh, we have to look at it uh, from that point of view. And the other indicator, this is the second time that the SCO uh, summit is being kind of marginalized. Uh, uh, Modi, who otherwise does not leave any other international cemetery uh, to project himself as to be the leader of the emerging leader, global leader uh, to help, of course, his own domestic uh, audience has missed it, missed this very important meeting without any, apparently any reason. And let me remind you, earlier India was the host of the SCO summit and they, instead of uh, having a physical summit, they had a virtual summit. What are these indications? Prime Minister Narendra Modi from this particular Council of Heads of State Summit, what sort of a message does it send across the SEO forum and towards the member states? I think people would uh, assess those who believe in realism uh, as a theory of international relations. They would know that China and India are competitors. China and India have real issues. China is a emerging power. We know that global power and and obviously the prevailing uh, the existing uh, power, global power, USA. So U.S. has uh, has chosen India as a as a, as a counterweight to China to contain China in the Indo uh, Indo in in the Indo Pacific region, and I think. There are several indicators, they, they say it. Of course, they keep saying that it's our, uh, as I said earlier, strategic autonomy. But no, I think it's, it's about strategic ambiguity, a game which can play both ways, that India could lose its credibility with these, uh, if they, they continue with this kind of uh, tactics of, of, of evasion. And uh, so I think SCO uh, should not depend on India. I think India... Uh, this approach by Indian side have any sort of a negative impact on the functioning or the effectiveness of the SEO in future? I won't be a, a kind of, uh, I won't, I won't, I would, I would not like to uh, predict that. But sure enough, I do not see India being a, 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 a of course, an important member of SEO unless it changes its its global perspective and the kind of role that they want to play and they see the 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 potential of is this organization potential of this uh, this configuration of uh, uh, of of countries of the south which they should uh, i'm hopeful that they probably would one day realize that how important it is add some of the statistics that i gave and some of the statistics that our our friend gave it that being such an important one fourth of the population, 20 percent of the oil and gas. And so you keep counting on it and, and, and there's no end to it. And of course, China being the founder member of this country is uh, of this organization is the is is actually the emerging power. And now is the industrial powerhouse, global powerhouse. So I think India, if it has to become 
a, an important third, they, they aim to be the third largest economy and so on and so forth. They have to, I think it will be a compulsion. So I'm hoping that they'll see the, the, the uh, at the end of the day, they'll see the, uh, the benefits of being more active and being more positive on this SCO. And when they really become uh, very active and positive members, I'm hoping that Pakistan and India at least could start to talk on this platform. At least if Mr. Modi was there, I'm pretty sure that the two leaders might have shaken hand and would have said some pleasant things that we we are still waiting for those pleasant things to be uh, to be exchanged between Pakistan and Pakistani leaders and the Indian leaders. So I think it is the irony that uh, these two important countries uh, are not even talking to each other. So I think that is where I think the problem lies in terms of India and Pakistan, that we have to start talking. We have to start the the, the dialogue. Without dialogue, we cannot resolve problems and the problems cannot await. They, they complicate, they become more sources of further problems. So I think we have to talk to India. India has to talk to us. And, yes. the, and the owners of creating that conducive environment for having that productive dialogue between Pakistan and India rests on the shoulders of the Indian side. Am I correct? Indeed, indeed, correct, because, you know, it's all... Mr. Baloch, let's move to another important aspect. Before heading towards some uh, important statements made by uh, Prime Minister during his address, uh, let's talk about the expansion of the SEO. What does that entail with the inclusion of Belarus uh, as the 10th full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Uh, what sort of an impact is going to have on the overall dynamics of this organization? Uh, well, I think we should... It's SEO by its uh, uh, aims and objective is supposed to be an inclusive uh, regional cooperation. It cannot uh, close the doors. Whether one agrees with some 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 countries' uh, uh, policies or not, so I think it's a, it's a welcome it's a welcome uh, uh, measure that Belarus, a, a an active member of uh, its own bloc, is joining SEO. And I think there are potentialities in each country, each member, and Essentially, the, reg the regional cooperation is supposed to uh, kind of work as a, as, a, as, a, as a machine of complementing the energies to synergize the, the potential of various countries. So I think each member brings its own particular and peculiar potential, which can obviously be harnessed for the good of the region and for the good of the globe. Yes, Mr. Uh, with the inclusion of every new full member in this particular organization, uh, what sort of an impact it would have on the working of this organization overall? Before commenting on this question, I want to go back to that to first the, one, the Indian one. Please go ahead. Like, it is very unfortunate that India does not see its interest in regional terms. Rather than taking it this into a regional and regional approach, to political and economic issue, it is taking its own exclusive security oriented unilateral approach for conflict, resol uh, conflict resolution, which would not be good for the interest of entire region, which would not be good for the overall objective like uh, the, the, as the objective of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is connectivity, integration and economic cooperation with each other. If India is taking this route, it means it is clearly giving a signal that it is more interested in joining the Western Bloc rather than joining the regional organization. So is it going to have any uh, adverse impact or effect on uh, the functioning of the SU as an organization of this particular region? Yes, I mean, it will be dividing this region into two blocks. Once the region is to, divided into two blocks, the Indian bloc, and definitely it will be supported by the United States in Europe, they would be making its own diplomatic move in the region, and that would not allow this region to function on uh, trade, economic connectivity. That thing would be defeated. Then the region would again be locked in that security game and that terrorism instability. So for achieving that greater objective, it is important that all country should go above and beyond their national interest and adopt collective regional approach to political issues. Uh, so right. Uh, what about the expansion, expansion of the SEO with the, uh, with the inclusion of every new member? What sort of an impact is going to have o on the overall dynamics? As Mr. Baloch was of the view, every new inclusion is going to bring in that very potential characteristic of a new member joining in. 
definitely now like the world has uh, the, the political frictions are dividing countries are taking their sides they are either going on the eastern front or going on the western front so any expansion of the shanghai cooperation organization would definitely be bringing its own strength to the organization if it is going toward eastward then it would include many east east asian countries if it is going toward uh, i mean uh, it also shows the influence of uh, russia on this organization that it will be further bringing all other uh, small countries that are in alliance with Russia. So, 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 so talking about the vision of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization of Regional Connectivity and Economic Integration, we know Pakistan has that flagship project of Belt and Road Initiative, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Uh, now, Prime Minister in his address has also talked about, uh, once again, highlighted uh, about the country's strategic location, making it one of the ideal uh, conduit for trade in the region. Also, CPAC supplementing SEO's vision of regional connectivity and economic integration. Now, uh, linking the earlier point discussed with the inclusion of more and more members into this particular organization, and in terms of enhancement of regional connectivity, what are the dividends associated with that, not only for Pakistan, but also for the region as an overall? Uh, Jawad, CPEC has made us more an integrated part of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization because it is a flagship program of connectivity. This is how connectivity look in real terms. If the countries are locked in their national interest, they could not go beyond their security and political interest. It would not be possible to get any kind of connecti connectivity. As we have seen that Europe and North America, even East Asian countries, they have realized this thing much earlier and they have passed that stages. Now they are at much better level of connectivity, trade and, uh, uh, and other collective issues like climate change. So it is extremely important in this region that there is this realization that countries go beyond their national interest. They come with a collective approach to, to, uh, to address the menace of terrorism, to address the menace of poverty, to address the, the threat of uh, climate change. They are now in 21st century becoming far greater threat than the threat to from any other security state. So now slowly and gradually all those theories or policies that exclusively focus on securities are going away. There is a re greater realization that we must have a collective approach toward greater political problem, greater problem that is a threat to the survival and existence of humanity as well. Uh, uh, right, Mr. Baloch, uh, talking about the strategic location of Pakistan, providing an ideal conduit for trade here in this particular region, and also uh, CPAC being the flagship project of BRI supplementing SEO's vision of regional connectivity and economic integration. The dividends uh, both ways. What's your understanding for Pakistan and the region uh, as an overall? What's your understanding of that? Uh, I think if you look at the future of the world, economic order, there is one political order, the other is the economic order. I think we see the uh, contours of a connected world, connected not only via the web, but physically connected on what is the road um, and belt initiative of China. That be the case, and we must not forget that Pakistan uh, by this is the the uh, kind of uh, God's gift uh, where we are located. Uh, so I think we could become very much hub of regional trade, energy hub. In fact, energy uh, hub also in the sense of its transportation, refining. So I think Pakistan can really be uh, has a win-win situation, uh, and that is all the reason that we have put in our all in a way effort all the governments irrespective of their political orientation have supported and in fact the way the the people of pakistan support uh, this um, uh, cpac and of course part, being part of the road and belt initiative so i think there is a great potential uh, and this could one day uh, we might be discussing i think in the coming years or so that how cpac is playing an important role in the actual 
implementation of the dream of a harmonious, a prosperous, and a peaceful world. Yes, Mr. Yes. Uh, right, uh, Mr. Baloch. Uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, terrorism. Here uh, we talk about out of those 25 strategic documents that have been approved by uh, this particular Council of the Heads of State, uh, there has been also a resolution including the cooperation. Uh, programs to combat terrorism, separatism, and extremism from uh, 2025 to 2027. Uh, also, we uh, uh, look at that particular address by Prime Minister talking about uh, the threat of uh, terrorism, also emphasizing the importance of maintaining peace in the region, uh, being the precondition for economic development. Regarding Afghanistan, he has talked about for this particular common objective, Afghanistan is the linchpin to this particular common objective, talking about terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, which are of course condemnable, uh, and it should be condemned by all in clear and unambiguous terms. At the same time, he has talked about the engagement with Afghanistan of the international community in order to alleviate that particular suffering, in order to address those crises the Afghan people are faced with. The location of Afghanistan and how crucial, peaceful and stable Afghanistan is when it comes to uh, getting the dividends of regional connectivity under the forum of SEO is concerned. In fact, whenever I am asked this question about Afghanistan uh, and its place and the, the, the aspect of terrorism, I say, in fact, elimination of terrorism and uh, denial of spaces, safe spaces to the non-state actors in Afghanistan is most vital interest in the, in the most vital interest of the Afghanis themselves. They have been like, they have been millions of them. They have been uh, refugees. Their economy is in shambles. They are completely isolated in the world. So primarily, if you look at it, it is in the Afghanistan's immediate short term and the long-term interest that there is a peace in Afghanistan, that there is no non-state actor is not allowed to, to operate within the territory of Afghanistan. But coming to your di question directly, yes, I think Afghanistan is a big challenge as far as the regional connectivity is concerned, as far as the implementation of CPAC is concerned, because and also connecting the Central Asian uh, states uh, onto the what is or what we call the Euro Asia, onto the West Asia and South Asia is concerned. Afghanistan has an important location, and there is the need for Afghan uh, rulers to understand this. But at the same time, I must say that the world has to help Afghanistan uh, to 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 sort of help them increase their capacity of governance, uh, to increase uh, and help them kind of come out of isolation if they are pushed into further isolation, and this is my personal view, that probably they won't be able to have the capacity to, to fight these non-state actors. So I think there is a probably a need for a regional approach to fighting terrorism, especially coming out of Afghanistan. So I hope that this dialogue at the SCO level, and of course, given the China's uh, Chinese influence on, on Taliban, there has to be a maybe a smaller uh, group of countries in SCO who, in collaboration with Pakistan, China, and of course, incorporating the Afghan rulers, can come up with some kind of a way out of this dilemma that this region faces because of which Pakistan is suffering a lot. Our economy, our political stability, our social stability, our ecology uh, is completely devastated. So I think we, uh, Afghanis, have a highest stake. We have a high stake. The region has a high stake in eliminating Afghanistan uh, terrorism, which emanates from the Afghan territory, Mr. Jamal. Afghans, Afghans need to understand the kind of dividends or the positive effects the regional connectivity would have for the people in Afghanistan. We've seen the pattern of repeated denials that the de facto authorities in Afghanistan have been talking about that there isn't any militant outfit or a terrorist organization that is operating from the Afghanistan soil. If this particular pattern continues, so you all already talked about that regional approach in that sort of a scenario with the pattern of of continuous denials on the part of the interim Afghan authorities, what could be uh, what could be those contours of that regional approach in order to eliminate 
uh, the threat that emanates from Afghan soil? I think first of all, we re- we have to we. Uh, I mean, I would suggest like this. First of all, the rhetoric um, in terms of our self rhetoric and rhetoric of Afghanistan on the public level has to be uh, have to come down. It has to be more a quiet diplomacy which should work because what happens with the ret- this rhetoric? Those non-state actors they get more energy. That air, this is what they want. A discard among the regional people, uh, regional states, a, a, a disharmony in the region, because that is the most conducive environment for them. When there is there is a confusion, where there's a discord among the states, and especially the neighbors, the, the states are not are 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 like they themselves are uh, engaged in encountering each other rather than fighting them. So I think first of all. Uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan has to first of all start a very very serious dialogue on this. Of course, supported by China and other regional sta- states uh, in the Central Asia, which have in fact Turkey can can be a very very important c- country which can have a play play a role. Uh, Qatar has been hosting the Afghans before uh, the uh, Taliban before they took over the power. That could be uh, brought in. Saudi Arabia, friends, can be brought in. Iran can be brought in. But it has to be a regional approach, uh, a new initiative, even if it means a, a, a calling for a regional, special regional meeting. Now, for example, what happened in Doha? That was a dialogue by the UN. Uh, so I think there is a need. Uh, I want to see. That's my wish that Pakistan should host a, a Afghan Afghan regional uh, conference where the. Af- but first of all, Afghans have to agree to join that. And tell the region, tell the world, what do they want? How do, how can they help? How can they be helped to fight the non-state actors? So I think this is uh, the 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 effort has to be put in at very very uh, like different uh, levels, bilateral, regional, and international level that the peace can be achieved in Afghanistan and we can fight the menace of terrorism. Uh, yes, uh, right, Dr. Bazai, the cooperation programs to combat terrorism. When it comes to Afghanistan being the linchpin uh, in that particular regard, as uh, highlighted by Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, uh, the maintenance peace in the region, that is a precondition for economic development. We know for a fact China has concerns. Uh, Pakistan has serious concerns with irrefutable evidence against the terrorist outfits operating from Afghanistan soil. Iran has concerns, Russia has concerns, Tajikistan has concerns. How these all countries collectively can get uh, the Afghan de facto authorities fulfilling that international obligation? <coughs> there are two pathways for the region. One is CPEC. CPEC is much more than energy project, roads, orange land. It is a school of thought. It is a mindset. Like we, the first time it is, I think it is a great, uh, 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 it is a great initiative of Chinese government that they have given the idea of investment and thinking above and beyond security interests, going above terrorism. The other way is the same old way of state-sponsored terrorism, instability, violence, and extremism. If we go on the farmer way, there is no doubt that there would be no chance of any economic integration and any peace. So it is extremely important for all regional countries to adopt the first CPEC-oriented approach rather than going for the security-oriented issues. Uh, Dr. Fedab is a foreign affairs expert. Thank you very much for taking time out for views on news tonight. We really appreciate that. On Skype, we were joined by Mr. G.R. Baloj, former ambassador. Mr. Baloj, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that. With that, we come to the end of today's episode. Till the next one, take good care of yourselves.